Now, if you're a regular on PCA's YouTube channel, these two faces are familiar to you. Uh, so welcome, Lake. Welcome, Charles. And today is actually going to be the first of a four-part series. And it's something that hopefully you'll be able to watch and learn a little bit, much as I have just learned standing right here next to them. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about bore scoring. What is it? How does it happen? And with the history of aluminum blocks, more specifically, the history of aluminum blocks in Porsches. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. So lately, if you, you know, surf different forums or, you know, stories online, bore scoring, if you say that loud enough, it scares people. So we want to really educate, and we mentioned it in some other videos we've done together and how to kind of identify and such, but let's go more in depth because that's what our viewers have asked is spend more time with you to specifically know what is bore scoring. Well, any type of scoring or it's that type of wear. So it's a failure of the surface where you now have, as opposed to having a smooth surface or a engineered or textured surface that can hold oil or support load, you now have a damaged surface. We call it scoring because you can see marks, vertical Visible and down. lines. Yeah. Visible lines where it's scoring the cylinder. Well, the problem with that is now you don't have a load-bearing surface anymore that can retain oil. Everything is now scarred and scratched, so there's less area to hold load, and there's no area to hold oil. So at some point, the rest of the system around it begins to fail. So look, we have these blocks here these were sent to you to be repaired, but we can use these to illustrate what happens in the cylinders. Correct. Yep. So maybe you'll walk, Charles, you can walk us through this? Yeah, so some background. So this engine here is an M96. And same- uh, M96 six, is our found in. In a Boxster, Cayman 911, and some of the engines also carry- What years? 97 through 08. Okay. And it. then you have different engine designations, but there's also people will say, well, I have an M97. Well, it's the same engine, it just has a different code depending on what model you're, what displacement it is. So, um, so this block is a lock sill block. So to explain that process, that's the first thing I want to explain to everybody. So Porsche used Alucil for decades and still uses Alucil. And that's back to the air-cooled engines? That goes all the way back to the air-cooled engines and the 944, which was the first water-cooled engine to use uh, Alucil block for Porsche, that is. And so with the Locusil process, I kind of dumb it down and I call it localized Alucil. So I have a little example piece right here. Uh, this is actually from an engine that had a deep chunk failure, which is not very common. We don't see it very often, but it makes for a very good visual. So you can actually see two different colors. Yep. You have a, a larger, thicker area that's a lighter gray, and then you have a thinner, dark gray. So in the casting process for the engine block, they use a freeze cast insert that has silicon particles suspended in resin. And then when they put the molten aluminum into the mold, it burns off the resin and leaves the silicon particles that are at the surface uh, embedded in that aluminum. And then the rest of the block is just regular aluminum. Right. Where with an alucil block, you have high silicon content through the entire yeah, casting. The entire it's one material, the whole casting. Yeah. So lo the Locusil process has only been used by Porsche in this generation of vehicle. It's never been used in any other engine. But I will add that other manufacturers have used very similar processes, Toyota, Honda, with very great success. A good example, the uh, NSX and the Prelude are, were the first two engine vehicles that had engines with a block done with this exact same process, but done by- Where it's localized silicon. Where it's, where it's localized silicon around the bores. But the old 928s, 944s and all that, that was all alucil. Correct. So all those blocks were monolithic castings, just one so material. So one type of material throughout the whole piece. Through the whole piece. Okay. So, and what makes this different than say, uh, an engine, an iron block, uh, or uh, an engine with Nicosil cylinders is that the bore itself is raw aluminum, basically. There's no plating, there's no coating. A lot of people have the misunderstanding. They think Alucil, they hear sill or Laka sill. They think, oh, that's a coating because Nicosil is a coating. No, there is no coating oh. on the bores. What that's the big difference, right? Is that yes. the old air-cooled uh, 911 engines were aluminum, but they were Nicosil plated 
So you were, the piston was running against a nickel, nickel silicon plating, which is very different than running on an alusil. And then this is this other iteration where it's localized silicon, the rest of the block being just regular aluminum. So it's really three different block configurations, yep. really. And one of the things that makes this different, I have some example pistons here as well. So here's um, a piston out of, let's say this was a 34996 piston. You can tell by this, the design on the crown. But you can see on the skirts, there's a wear pad. That's on both sides. And what this is, if I were to take a magnet, that this is an ironclad coating. So basically, you can't have aluminum on aluminum contact. They'll weld together. Mm. Yeah. And to just dumb it down, bore scoring is when you have aluminum to aluminum contact and you have metal transfer and the scoring is actually galling. Yep. So what can happen, and there's several things that can happen, but to give one example, find the right one to show. So, ah, oh, perfect. So, so this so is the coating breaking down. This is an example of a piston. This is a 3.6 piston where the coating has actually started coming off. And once it gets to a certain point that, and you can see the other side, it was starting to get damaged as well. But then one, it turns well, into this. Once, once that coating is intact on this side. Yeah. So now, now aluminum is touching aluminum and scoring. And, yep. and scoring, and it's, and it's causing uh, galling and metal transfer. And this is obviously in an end stage. Of, of a failure, what we're looking at here. How come it didn't happen to this side is my question. Well, this is the thrust side of it. This is seeing more load at, ah, BDC, at BDC changeover. Okay. Yep. So there's a different stress level on each yes. side. When of the piston, piston, every time the piston goes to bottom dead center, it stops, rocks, and then change the direction. Ah. And bore scoring always starts at the bottom of the cylinder. Oh, interesting. And then as it gets worse, it works its way up the cylinder. So that's one of those things when people are checking engines for bore scoring, just pulling the spark plug out and looking through the spark plug into a cylinder doesn't always tell you the entire picture. Because it's further in. It's yes. usually further in. You actually have to check the cylinders with a piston all the way at top dead center and, and go in, under. go through the sump ah. with, with a bore scope and actually check the bottom of the cylinder. So then you know you don't have a problem if you look at it at the bottom of the cylinder. So if you're looking at through your spark plug holes and you see it, that's already pretty bad. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. If you can see it through the spark plug, it's done. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But the, the point of this is just to explain uh, what the failure is and that there are things that we can do, one, to know if you actually have a problem or not. Mm -hmm. There are ways to monitor to see if, if you're maybe starting to have a problem. And also there are things that you can do to help prevent this from happening. All right, so now that we know what bore scoring is, as an owner, are there some, other than looking either through the spark plug hole or underneath, are there some telltale signs and does it happen more on one side versus the other? Yep, so typically, so on this engine and lots of other Porsche engines, there's a pin offset in the piston. Mm -hmm. So to explain what a pin offset is, so you have your wrist pin bore going through here mm -hmm. and my, you're not going to be able to see this i can see it standing here looking at it. on the camera you're not going to see it but the hole is actually offset going this way just slightly just oh, slightly okay. going this way and mm -hmm. the reason they do that is to make the engine quite run quieter mm -hmm. so that rock over there's yep. not as much slap of the piston okay so not as know that slapping sound right when you start the car up when it's cold yeah okay by offsetting that pin you can change the amount of rock and it reduces the amount of noise but one of the things that we've noticed is that they're each, each engine, the offset, they're using the same piston on both sides of the engine. So on one side- But each side shifts on the opposite side, right? Yeah, so one uh, side, the offset's going technically what we would call the wrong direction, mm -hmm. and that would be on bank two, and bank two always scores first. And that bank two would be on the passenger side of the car? Yes. Okay. So cylinders- Yeah, remember though, that's the- Driver's side exhaust. Exactly, right. <laughs> yeah, on, so on a, yeah, so on a 996. So 996. on a 996, it typically happens on the passenger side bank, but the sooty tailpipe is on the driver's side. Yes, yes. Okay. And I, will, I, and I do want to add, because I get, I get this question all the time, what about a Boxster or a Cayman? We don't see this problem with Boxsters, uh, except with like a late model, like an 07 or 08, with a 3.4 engine out of the Cayman S. 
Oh, okay. It's, because that's actually a Cayman engine in the, in the late Boxster. Is but, that because the piston material? Yes, right? because and what we've noticed, again, the engines that have bore scoring have forged pistons. Where the base, the 2.5 Boxster, 2.7 uh, Boxster, and the 2.7 uh, Cayman, and also the 3.2 Boxster S, they all have cast pistons. Ah. And on the cast pistons, rather than this printed wear pad, yeah. the piston has a plating, like an ah. ironclad plating, and the whole piston's coated, and the, the plating itself doesn't flake off. So, so therefore, seems, so it never crashes against the, the sidewall. Right, it, yeah, and we, cast pistons have less thermal expansion, so um. they don't move as much. So if you have a forged piston, it can handle higher heat, it's more durable, especially under stress, you know, for track days, that kind of stuff but it starts off smaller at cold temperature because it grows more. Hmm. So there's more chance for it to rock and pitch and tuck if it's a forged piston. But that cast piston with that full round coating on it and less expansion is a little more stable back to the bottom of the bore rocking around. Unfortunately, a forged piston is gonna rock around a little bit more at the very bottom, which could lead more prone to cracking. So what's funny is, well, not funny, but you typically hear forged whatever, you're thinking that's like the higher end, that's the better uh, equipment or part. But here, for those of you that own a base model, in this case, it's something to be proud about yeah. because you're probably not gonna see bore scoring. Yeah, yeah oh, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it, there's so many things that can propagate this type of failure. Like Charles said, it's really about welding of those things together. So you get aluminum on aluminum, you're gonna have bore scoring. So what are the different paths you can get there? Well, obviously the plating coming off, be it from mechanical knocking around forces or from sometimes lack of lubrication, other issues which we'll get into in the series. Those are the reasons that you lose that skirt coating. Once that skirt coating is gone, it's just a tight ticking time bomb until the system's totally destroyed. So as an owner, you know, uh, listening, right? Mm -hmm. And then also seeing the sooty left tailpipe. From the driving experience, can you tell a difference if the motor has started bore scoring or not? Uh, typically, early yeah. signs, but no. No, it typically what, what we've noticed, the cars will actually, um, it might go faster for a shorter period of time. It's kind of counterintuitive. Say that again. Like uh, you, you experience more performance because what what te tends to happen? You start burning oil, and you get carbon buildup on the top of the piston, and, and it increases your compression. And it yeah. Increases your compression a, a little bit. Okay. So, yeah. So th that, uh, but it's typically you'll short lived. Though, short. It's, <laughs> very, yeah, it's, it's, it's very short lived. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's one of the things that you'll get a lot of carbon buildup top of the piston and sooty tailpipe that's that's a telltale uh, if the driver's side tailpipe is sooty but it's usually oil consumption and th that's one of the things it's if the engine let's say it wasn't burning any oil between oil changes and then your next oil change it took a quart in 2,000 miles and then the next oil change it took a quart in a thousand and the next one was a quart in 500 at that point yeah. when it's at a quart in 500 or it gets so this where did it go that's so it. this one so this is probably about a quart every hundred miles is what oh. what, the, what this bad boy looks like. Yeah. Um, but this probably wasn't burning any oil yet. Oh. Okay. Because yeah. I, I've seen I, because I've seen engines come to us that have lost an IMS bearing yeah. and they send us the block to fix and the block looks perfect and but you look at the at the uh, skirt and it's all chewed up. But they had no idea. But it, it wasn't burning any oil yet. Oh. So in, in in this stage, it's not done yet but it's getting it's, it's, yeah it's on the fuse it's, is lit yeah the fuse is lit it seems like a lot of people go well why does the 3.8 why do the 3.6 and 3.8 seem to get more score more more scoring uh they have a longer stroke uh and also uh at bdc so when the piston goes to the bottom of the cylinder mm -hmm. it actually comes out of the bore about yep. seven millimeter so it's like this it's coming out oh and then it changes direction. So that may be contributing. So when it rocks at the yeah. bottom. So it's it like rocking, it's rocking on that pad. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So it's like chipping away at it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, silly question. So say your car mm -hmm. is at this point and you say it's burning oil a quart every 200, 200 miles, let's say. Right. What if I just keep putting oil in it? At some point, cats are gonna get all clogged up. Oh, uh, okay. And yeah. 
And if it gets really, the, what happens, what you don't see with this it's is that- It's been cleaned. The, yeah, the piston to cylinder clearance at that point is probably 20 thousandths. So this probably sounds like a diesel Porsche tractor. Oh, so it, that, it's, 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 it's loud. Oh, okay. And if you run it long enough, those, all that extra clearance rocking, it'll break the bottom of the cylinder off. Oh, okay. If you, if you, if you drive it you, that. You can run it till it finally breaks. You, yes, can, you can run it. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. But it will break and it will break eventually because of what the started here. And there's other, and the other thing that we've seen examples where someone's driven it for, for years mm -hmm. like this, you get a lot of soot in the oil mm -hmm. and soot damages timing chains. Yeah. And if you get high amounts of soot, it actually cost the, the timing chain to stretch and break. And if you lose a timing chain, then you're, that's you bad, really bad, bad news, day. bad, bad news. Yeah, and especially when, when it's at speed, there's, there's nothing left to rebuild. So not to, not to scare everyone that's watching, um, obviously this doesn't happen to the majority of engines. No. There's, there's ways that we'll talk about it in, in upcoming videos of um, you know, what you can do to identify what you can do to keep it from getting worse. Mm -hmm. um, but in, with your experience, I again, hate to put you on the spot, but like, how worried should I be about more scoring? Honestly, if, if you're looking at a car or you own one, and you have the, if you're looking at buying one, PPI and bore scope. If the shop you take it to a PPI doesn't know what bore scoring is and doesn't move want to bore it, move yeah. to the next yeah. one. It's an absolute must to have a, the engine bore scope. Yeah. Even better if it's a, like a PCA member and they're willing, do an oil change, pull an oil sample. Yeah. You can check for elevated silicon and yeah. aluminum levels in the oil, yeah, which will we show also, up. And we also have videos of, a, I think you did it with, uh, with us to do a, how to have a proper PPI, yep. you know, dropping mm -hmm. the, um, the sump and taking a look and all that kind of stuff. So yep. absolutely agree. If you're buying um, a used Porsche, have someone thoroughly go through it with a PPI so you don't get you know stuck with the hot potato, so to speak. Or if you said, yeah. the oil analysis really will tell you what's going on. If it's there, you'll see it in the oil analysis. You can see the iron coming off. Mm -hmm. You can see the aluminum. So now, now going up, what you're right? talking about is now let's say like my 996, I already own it. Yep. Right, so it doesn't matter if I do a PPI, but that's a post purchase inspection. Yeah, now it's a <laughs> post purchase inspection, right? So now I can, when I drain my oil, capture a sample, mm -hmm. send it to a lab. Yep. You can analyze and know what kind of metals are in my oil mm -hmm. because this pad is a special type of. Exactly. Metal. And that's what, one of the things that makes the Porsche engine so unique is that most engines are going to be iron block or even if they're an aluminum block engine they're going to have iron liners so the amount of iron in the oil on a regular type engine is usually way way higher than it is on a porsche engine because of these aluminum or nicosyl cylinders they don't have any iron so when you start to see high iron levels and i say high me in the 30s or above in parts per million it's almost always going to be this is coming off because mm. there's not that much left iron in the engine that will wear normally. Time and chains don't wear that much. The camshafts don't really wear that much unless you've got a huge problem. So what you normally see is that, but because it's the silicon, the sill and alucil, the sill and locusil, when you see the silicon levels come up and the aluminum levels come up, that's how you know there's bore scoring. You can take those three uh, elements in the oil analysis and kind of triangulate and know if there's bore scoring going on. And I think that's important, you know, for those of you that, you know, DIY or even if you're taking it to a shop, what I always say is having your oil analyzed is like going to your doctor once a year to get your, your health checked. And yep. not only does it set a baseline for your own car, but you have a fulsome database of other cars similar to mm -hmm. mine and you know what levels of different materials should be in the oil. And then with my baseline, if you see any numbers start to increase, then you can help us figure out what that might be coming from. Yeah, essentially, like you said, just going to the doctor, they do a blood test. This is the blood test for your engine because blood, you know, the oil is the lifeblood of your engine. And it's the same thing. Well, there you have it. That is basically bore scoring. Talked a little bit about the cases and aluminum for Porsches. We still have three more uh, episodes for you, so stay tuned.